Number 15. The pressure of a sample of gas is measured at sea level with an open-ended mercury manometer. Assuming atmospheric pressure is 760.0 millimeters of mercury, determine the pressure of the gas in these three units. So we need to find the pressure of the gas in millimeters of mercury, that's MMHG, atmospheres, which is ATM, and KPA, which is kilopascals. Then we have this nice little drawing of a manometer. Now, there's two different types of manometers. There's open-ended and closed-ended manometers. In this case, we're dealing with an open-ended manometer, and what this basically means is that this end is open to the atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure that's interacting with this manometer is 760.0 millimeters of mercury. Okay. So the first thing is, is with this interaction of the outside atmospheric pressure, we need to find out what the actual pressure of the gas is. And in order to determine that, we're going to take the height difference of the gas level in the manometer and do something with the um, atmospheric pressure. Now, basically, I just want to give you a little bit of a guideline here. There's two different types of uh, manometers when it's open, right? So here's my little U shape. That's what I was trying to draw here. And one side is open to the environment. So that's the right side here. And then one side is hooked up to the gas, right? So G for gas. Okay. Now you could have two different options here. You could have something in which the height on the gas side is higher than the gas side on the atmosphere side. Or it could be the opposite way. You could have the atmosphere side being higher than the gas side. Now in our case, let me just erase this so you guys can see it a little bit better. Which interaction are we dealing with here? Oh boy, what did I just do? <laughs> Which interaction are we dealing with here? This one, right? In which the higher side is toward the gas side and the lower side is toward the atmosphere side. I hope you guys can see that. Now, I like to think about it in terms of looking at the right-handed side. If it is lower towards the atmosphere, right? Lower, I think to myself in terms of subtraction. And if the right side is higher towards the atmosphere, I like to think about that in terms of a plus. So in our case, all we have to do since we are here, the pressure of the gas would be equal to the atmospheric pressure. That's like the total pressure. So I'm just going to say PATM. That's the atmosphere. Since we're dealing with the right side being lower, it's going to be subtracted by the height. And that's our formula here. But if we were dealing with the other side, it would be the atmosphere plus the height. Now pause the video if you need to. I just need to erase these because I need room to actually do the math. So hopefully, hopefully my drawing was a good one. I should have been an artist. Ay. Anyway, it could be like abstract art. Okay. So what do we got going on here? So for us, the pressure of the gas is going to be the atmospheric pressure, which they told us, which was 760.0 millimeters of mercury. And I'm going to subtract by the height, which is 13.7. Now this is centimeters. And they told us that, you know, the, um, or actually... They didn't tell us in this case, right? They just said the sample of the gas is measured at sea level with an open-ended... Oh, they did tell us. They said it was an open-ended mercury manometer. So this is centimeters of HG. So hold the phone, though. Remember, with subtraction, the units have to be the same. This one is in millimeters, and this one is in centimeters. So generally speaking, the, the better unit to express of pressure is millimeters of mercury, and they wanted to know what it was in millimeters of mercury. So the first thing is I would keep this unit, and I'm just going to switch this up. What is 13.7 centimeters in, of mercury in terms of millimeters? So that's the first thing I'm going to do, and that's just a conversion. 13.7 centimeters of mercury 
Now we can go from, because remember, this is just like a distance, right? We can go back all the way to the beginning of chem when we learned our conversions, and we can go from centimeters to meters to millimeters, but the easier way is to just kind of remember, and this is just a, like a quick can version, that for every one centimeter, there is 10 millimeters. That's just easier, I think. So I'm just going to use this conversion to go from centimeters to millimeters, right? And if you want to do the conversion factor, right, centimeter go on the bottom, because that's the unit that you don't want. Millimeter will go on the top. And for every 10 millimeters, there's one centimeter. You don't have to write centimeter of mercury or millimeter of mercury because you're not going to cancel this out. Just the centimeters cancel out. And you can just see that this now goes over here. And then it makes everybody, makes it all nice. So all you're doing is 13.7 times 10. So this is basically 137. And that's 137 millimeters of mercury. And now that's what's being uh, said here. So instead of saying minus 13.7 centimeters of mercury, I'm now going to say that it's going to be minus 137 millimeters of mercury. And now since the units match, I can subtract them. So the pressure of the gas would be 760 minus uh, 137. So 623. And that's the final answer for the first part. So we just figured out what A was. So 623 millimeters of mercury. And there we go. That's the letter A. And maybe I'll just rewrite this again. Ooh, 620, 623 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Now all we have to do is we just have to use this amount and just convert to ATM and to kilopascal. So let's go for it. 623 millimeters of mercury. We're just converting from one pressure unit to another, so times by a ratio. Let's go to ATM first. So that means millimeters of mercury would be on the bottom because we don't want that unit, and the ATM would be on the top. Now go to your big four and just see, do we have a, a, um, a relationship between ATM and millimeters of mercury? Well, since all four of these are equal to each other, you can pick the two units that you need. One ATM equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So one ATM equals 760 millimeters of mercury. Cancel out the millimeters of mercury, and now you're just left with ATM. So that's the first answer, right? So 623 divided by 760. Everything is rhyming today. It's beautiful. Three sig figs, so 0 0.820. And that's an ATM. Okay, second answer down. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Okie dokie. And now we just have to go to kilo pascals. Well, looks like I have a relationship, if I just look at the bottom, between millimeters of mercury and kilopascal, right? 760 millimeters of mercury for every 101.325 kilopascal. So if I just get rid of this, right, and I use this again, millimeters of mercury would go on the bottom, but instead we're just looking for a different numerator. And the unit now would be kilo pascal, 101.325 equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So that number stands. Millimeters of mercury canceled. And now we're left with kilo pascal. So 623 times 101.325 divided by 760 and three sig figs. So 83.1. K P A kilopascal. And there you go. So eight eight eighty-three point one K P A. 
And that is awesome. Letter C is all done. And just remember, guys, all of these pressures are equivalent to each other. It's the same amount of pressure, but just in three different units. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you all are doing well and that you're studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And I'll see you all in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.